Today we're going to be going over the Reese Universal Receiving Hitch. I just picked it up recently at AutoZone and needed it in a pinch for this weekend. And I'm going to be installing it on my 1999 Jeep Cherokee. So we're going to go over the contents of the box and then the installation of the product. So we can see here the entire contents of the box. You have the receiver hitch in the middle here. And since this is universal, they have to accommodate for different sizes. You have the, uh, the mounting hardware that actually goes up onto the frame or unibody of your vehicle. This is recommended for SUVs and trucks. Uh, so we have one for each side. And then we have additional mounting brackets and hardware here. Uh, contents also included a box that had various nuts and bolts that will be used during your assembly, I'm assuming. You will only need to use what is applicable to your vehicle. Quick overview of the paperwork that comes with this. We have a uh, sticker that you're supposed to apply for maximum weight of your vehicle. Installation instructions, which does come in English and Spanish and breaks down per vehicle that this is suggested to fit. There's also some consumer information for the load balancing and towing of trailers with this. The contents of the mounting hardware come with carriage bolts, studs, regular bolts, and various nuts. Also comes with a wide range of various spacers and other brackets. This kit also does come with these spring looking things. Uh, I did look over the instructions very briefly. I believe these are meant to put a, a, a bolt on the end of this. So that way you can run this through a, a, an area you wouldn't normally be able to get something through. So I'm assuming you would fish the front of this through and then be able to pull this out through the other side. This is actually really nice. I've never seen this before. And I plan on keeping these for use once I'm done with this. Before we can actually begin installing this receiver, there are two steps you have to take in order to actually assemble this part right here first. The first one we can see here from the instructions is to install these pieces right here. Now I went ahead and I got all my hardware ready that I'm going to need for all of the steps. But for this very first step you're going to need, there's these smaller carriage bolts, these carriage bolt holders, and then um, some nuts to fit it. Just so you know, there are three different sizes of nuts in here that actually, they all look the same. Uh, they're not, if the thread don't work, don't force it. This one so happens to have the little uh, knockouts in here in order to make it tighter. Uh, there's only four of these, so I'm gonna use these. It doesn't specify, but I'm gonna use these for this since I need four of those. So what they want you to do in this very first step is to take these, take this part off right here. So they want you to take this and they want you to run it through this hole right here so that way it pops out whatever hole you need. I need this third hole, but they want you to have it pop out in that whatever hole that is. So that's gonna be kind of a pain to do. Uh, they tell you to do this one first in the thing. The step you gotta do after that is to get this bracket, so these brackets on there and you use these studs with the lock washers and the other nuts on there and there's three for each side. Okay here I am installing the carriage bolts from the inside here. Don't put them in the holes that I'm putting them in here. The manual states that you got to put them into the third from the center of the hitch on both sides. Don't do that. Put it in the second from the center. You're gonna have a lot more maneuverability when you have it in the third hole like they, like they recommend it's not going to fit, it's going to be too wide, and you're not going to be able to get it mounted. Okay, so I got the bolts holding these in on. I have them loose just so that way there's, there's some play side to side, so that way when you're going to mount this in, you'll have some room to move. This thing, you put the bolt on this. I curved the, uh, the end of it. And you just feed this through, and you, it pops right out. Actually worked really great. I've never used something like this before, so this was... This is actually awesome. So I really like this idea. I'm actually going to probably just have some wire laying around because you could make this, you know. If you're having trouble with a bolt somewhere, you know, 
wire it around and, uh, and you can do this yourself. But next up I'm going to go ahead and put on the other two brackets there. So here I'm going to be mounting these wings on here. Now I make a mistake here and I mistakenly attach these to the upper holes as you see me doing here. Don't do that. They actually go on the lower one. Pay attention to the manual. I quickly looked at it. I had to go ahead and take this apart in order to put those back in. But again, it goes. the studs go into the lower holes, not the upper holes. So be careful. All right, guys, I got these things on. Let me tell you, this thing is so unwieldy to work with. This thing just wants to move around. It wants to jump around. It is heavy. It is awkward. <laughs> It's kind of a pain. If you can have a buddy help you out with this thing, definitely have someone hold on to this. I, um, I was originally screwing these down all the way, these studs in, in order to get them in, but I decided to just get a hammer and just bang them right in. I think that was the easiest result for me. Uh, you know, if you're having difficulty keeping it on a table, you know, maybe stand this thing up and hit the studs in while it's facing down. So the next part for my instructions, now I need to take, there's a frame, there's a bolt in the frame that I need to take out, which if we come down here, get underneath the car, you can see that bolt right, right here. This is that bolt. So I'm going to be using the existing plate that's in here. There's a plate. It's kind of cocked up. It's bent up. So this has to come out in order to free up that plate in order to get something into it. So when I go to mount this in, I'm probably going to want to get it bolted up over there first. And I'm probably going to want to hold this thing up with like a bottle jack or something. Anything. Jack stands. Anything to hold this thing up since I'm doing this by myself. Hopefully I won't need to ask someone for help, but we'll see what happens. Jeez, that thing is long. All right, there it is. It is rusty. Hoping that there's a new one I can use in the kit. All right, so I just spent my time trying to open up these holes up here. Uh, you know, they're all rusted through. I live in New England, so everything's made out of rust up here. But um, this hole here, there's a hole back here, and then this hole back here, the holes I'm supposed to use. I've just been trying to clean up those threads. I don't have any taps, um, so I haven't been able to clean them up that way if I did. This would have been a million times easier, but uh, I, I was originally, like with this one, I chased it with the bolt that was in the back originally, since this is tapered in the front, hoping I can try to sneak into this one. I feel like I have enough bite on them now that uh, I don't want to keep wrenching at them to keep opening up the holes. I think I just want to go ahead and get this mounted up in here, so that way I can uh, just tighten it on once and not have to take it off and put it back on. So now I'm going to try fishing in one of the first carriage bolts on the driver's side. I'm going to do the first one in the back. So I'm going to do this one first and this one. Actually not this one. I'm going to do this one back here and then there's another one off camera. And you feed this up through the back where the bumper is. So I'll try doing that without hitting the camera. So I'm wondering if I could do this. Yeah, this looks like it's a lot easier. Yep, and then I'll put it on this way. something Oops, a hole. I'm gonna separate these two try to feed them in separately Thank you. 
think I got it in there sideways. So I'm gonna need a screwdriver to kind of try to pry it around. Looks like I got this thing in here sideways or something. That was a little difficult. <laughs> All right, so I guess I'll do the next thing. The next two. looks close enough to being good. Now this last one I, I should just be able to do by hand. Not needing that spring of a thing. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and put this on now that I've moved these studs down. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take this off and let these fall out, and I'm going to redo this on a different setting. Hopefully, I can just get away with I found a setting that's going to work for me. I might have to do the same thing to this side. But I'm gonna go ahead and thread in these again. Okay, what a nightmare this thing has been. End of ruining this on the last uh, few bolts, trying to redo them. So I guess I'm not gonna move this side. It's it's not perfectly centered, but it's close enough for what I'm gonna be doing. I don't have to worry about it that much. I'm not gonna be hauling a, a giant one this trailer. So now, finally, I'm gonna try to get this thing up here. need to tighten everything down to the torque specs that are specified in the manual. So I went ahead and I tightened everything up. I'm a little out of breath from putting everything in. This one right here, this bolt right here, did not go up all the way because there's a lip. I did not bang out a little bit in order to flatten it out when I tightened it down. I did that on this one. Here you can see it kind of flattened itself out. I don't know how. There's a little lip there, it flattened out. All oh, that's good. This one's a little, a little loosey goosey. I'm gonna try to 
crank down on it a little bit more. Just out of power right now. It's a little not in center. I'd say it's probably about half an inch off. To remedy that, I would just have to take all these off again, loosen this side, take these ones out, get these out, pull it over a little bit, and then use uh, use these bolt holes right here. And then I'd be able to get it in the middle. Right now, for what I'm going to be doing, that's fine. <laughs> I'm probably going to be taking these off again anyways when I go off-roading. So I'm going to become real familiar with this thing. Alright guys, so there you have my disaster of an install. Now, I don't think I would recommend this product to anybody. Um, it looks like it's great because it's universal. You can kind of, you know, if you go from vehicle to vehicle, you buy trucks often. This will probably be really good for you. Um, for me, right now on this Jeep, I need it. I'm going out somewhere Sunday. I need to have a trailer rented Saturday through Monday. I need this right now. Uh, I, if I had the option, I would have ordered and waited for the correct hitch for my vehicle. Um, it would have been probably $50 more. The $50 would have been worth it. This thing was a pain to get installed. And as you can see, I'm out of breath right now. I've been at this thing trying to get it in. You know, when your vehicle's a little rusty, that 30 to 45 minutes they tell you things are supposed to install takes a lot longer. If you're going to do this yourself, have a buddy with you. Don't do it by yourself. If you are going to do this by yourself, you can. Uh, have some jack stands and a jack nearby so that way it can help you bring everything up. But don't make the mistakes I made. Uh, first mistake, I installed the uh, studs in the wrong location uh, for mounting of that bracket that comes up. I put them in the upper location when they should have been in the lower location. Also, make sure when you're aligning this, don't put it into the third holes like it tells you in the manual. Put it in the second to the center holes on both. So that way you'll be able to get this thing centered. <sighs> Lastly, there's a little lip where the, uh, the frame, the unibody of the vehicle comes down. Hit that with a hammer just to start it moving out a little bit. You don't have to flatten it out all the way. But as you saw, on my driver's side, it sucked up real nice. Whereas on the passenger side, it's not on very good. You know, I might, I might end up taking this back off to correct all these issues. But as far as an installation is concerned, it's on. <laughs> don't buy this, guys. If you're going to be using it on multiple vehicles, go ahead. But if you're using it on your Jeep Cherokee like I am, no. Don't do it. This is a 99. Uh, it's a little bit different if you have the shield on this for the gas tank. Um, and the instructions are basically the same for the earlier models, the ones with the metal gas tanks. Have a buddy, pay attention to the instructions, and buy the right hitch. So until next time guys, I'm going to be getting the wiring harness tomorrow that should be going into this. That should be hopefully a very easy install compared to what this was. This took me hours to do when it only should have taken about an hour. So. Until the next episode, catch you later.